West Ham Massive are pleased to support Irons Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham and Essex communities. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, Barking and Dagenham Council, the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of the video details of this stream on YouTube. Thank you for your support. Come on you iron. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to the West Ham Massive. As I always ask you guys, please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much indeed for your support in this particular matter. We are here to discuss the Carabao Cup, League Cup, Milk Cup in old money, whatever. Um, League Cup will go with that. Lincoln City versus West Ham United. Again, in old money, it used to be Sinsil Bank. It's now called the LNER Stadium. Yes, LNER like the train company. So there you go. Anyway, before we, we go on, I'll get a little disclaimer out. If adult language offends, don't bother watching this because there is a chance that I might let the odd curse word out. I, I don't mean it, but it's, it's just me. OK, sometimes I let the odd sort of swear word out. And apologies if it offends anyone. And probably if it does, your best bet is to switch off now and go and watch Songs of Praise or something like that, quite frankly. Um, so, yeah, so we're here to discuss the, the goings on at, at Sinsil Bank, LNER Stadium, whatever tomorrow. Now, I have to be perfectly honest with you. I, I'm not an expert on teams. I, I, I probably sound really patronising to, to teams like Lincoln City, but. I, I don't know much about Lincoln City, uh, so I've had to go out and do a little bit of research. Um, so we'll go through it together. Um, we've got someone in the comments there. We, we, In fact, we had a couple of people in, in the comments section yesterday that we're here very, very early. I mean, look at this. This was yesterday at 8.47 p.m. Budgie says good evening. 24 hours before we went live, roughly. And he was joined very quickly by Happy Hammerette. And then she realized her mistake. <laughs> there you go. Never mind. Uh, and we've got Mr. Walsh. Yes. Bonjour. Um, I was in France the other day. Well, I was in France over the weekend. Actually, I went on Friday. I came back yesterday. I was in Lille for the, the Rugby World Cup. Those of you that saw the broadcast that my brother and I did whilst we was out there will know what we was out there for. We was there for the England Chile game, which was really good. Had a bit of a touch, actually. And I don't know whether any of you I might have mentioned it in, in the previous ones where we turned up to the stadium. We was getting the run around, right? And it was like, here's our tickets. Where, where are we sitting? And we had this steward took us there. Wrong place. This took, no, wrong place. We eventually found a steward that knew where, where we were supposed to go. And we walked into this section of the stadium and we went, well, this is a bit different. We had an executive box. I couldn't believe it. It was, it was unbelievable. And there was a number of other people that were coming in the box as well. A couple that were there before us. There was a few, a family that came in after us and they were all completely surprised, stunned by it. But anyway, that was my weekend. So bonjour to you, Mr. Walsh, and bonjour to anybody else that's watching this either live or latterly. And please, guys, if you are watching this live, get involved in the live chat. I'd really be interested in, in to know your thoughts. Apologies that Ben can't make it today. Other things have come up, so I'm just going to fly solo. I'm used to it, so no problem. We'll crack on with it. 
Right. So a little bit of due diligence. If anybody wants to know who the officials in the game tomorrow evening are, there they are. The referees, Joshua Smith, his assistants, Edward Smart, Nick Greenhow. And the fourth official is Lee Doherty. There is no VAR. And it is decided after 90 minutes if, uh, oh, sorry, it, it will be decided on the night. 90 minutes of regulation time. There is no extra time. It is straight to penalties. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what team Mr. Moyes puts out. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I think there'll be an awful lot of resting and rotation. I think we're going to see a, a quite a, a different team to what we saw against Liverpool. It will very likely be a very, very different team to the one that we'll take to the pitch on Saturday against Sheffield United. Sheffield United. I rather suspect. Uh, and there he is. He's he's there. He's watching. He's he's giving me his support. Um, hope you're well, bro. Um, yeah, so we, we, we've got the game against Lincoln. As I say, I suspect it will be heavily rotated. I'd be very interested to know what all you guys watching will would like to see in terms of... I mean, look, this is going to be really, really difficult to predict. I think there's, there's certain players I think we know won't be involved. I think it's very likely that Alphonse Areola won't be involved at all. I'd be very surprised to even see him on the bench, quite frankly. And you'd probably say that that would mean the the person that would probably go between the sticks very likely is going to be Lucas Fabianski. It, could it be, though, that maybe David Moyes is going to spring something of a surprise? And maybe could this fella get a go? Joseph Anang, now young goalkeeper, full of promise. He's, he's gone out on loan in the last season or two. He's, he's impressed. He's come back. He's in the, around the first team squad. Could it be that Joseph Anang maybe makes, makes a go between the sticks? We'll, we'll wait and see. Um, you know, there, there could be a number of players that, that are, I, I don't think that Kurt Zuma is going to be involved. I think Kurt Zuma will be, again, will be given a night off, same as, um, same as uh, Alphonse Areola. Um, we know that Aaron Cresswell is out injured. Could it be that Ben Johnson maybe makes an appearance for, for West Ham United? Now, personally, I, I, you know what? I know there's the story about he's, the club have said they're not going to renew his contract. He's going to go at the end of the season unless we obviously manage to sell him in January for, for some sort of nominal fee. Do you know what? It's a real shame when there's, a, there's an academy graduate that's come through. They've got into the first team squad. He had a little bit of time as the number one right back. He got ahead of Kufau. And then it just went wrong for one reason or another. And to be honest, he's not managed to get too much in the way of traction since. I'd, I'd really like to see him have a go. Could we see maybe the likes of Angelo Ogbonna? Could we see maybe Tilo Kera making making an appearance? Um, could it even be as a little bit of a wild card? Could we even have someone like maybe an Ollie Scarls making an appearance? Maybe as a, as a left back, left wing, left wing back? Who knows? As I say, if you, any of you guys have got your opinions on what you'd like to see in terms of the formation times of the personnel please let me know. Right. A few little factoids to get out of the way. As I say, I've been doing a little bit of research, been doing a little bit of digging. Here we go. So this is the first meeting between Lincoln and ourselves since the 29th of November 1982, when goals from Sandy Clark and the legend Ray Stewart saw West Ham prevail 2-1 in an FA Cup third round replay. It also happened to be the final appearance in Claret and Blue of Jimmy Neighbour. For those of you who remember the late Jimmy Neighbour. Um, Lincoln last beat, they beat Sheffield United in the previous round, 3-2 on penalties. This was after a nil-nil draw. It ended a run of 13 straight eliminations against top flight sides in the League Cup. As for ourselves, we have progressed from five of our last seven League Cup third round ties, but we did fail to Blackburn at this stage of the competition last season. Again, dreaded penalties. Lincoln are unbeaten in their last four home, league, home games. Three wins and one draw in that sequence with their last home defeat coming in a nil-one defeat by Burton Albion on the 25th of April 2023. And this is one that I've been banging the drum about, which is a little bit of a concern to me. We have failed to keep a clean sheet in our last now 10 domestic matches with the last shutout coming on the 7th of May this year in a 1-0 home win versus Manchester 
United's right. So let's get into it. Um, I'm guessing that's Ben saying it's going to be Fabianski and go. I suspect it may well be, but I wouldn't be totally shocked if Anang got between the sticks. But I think you're right. I think it probably will be. Um, it will be Lucas Fabianski. Kent's in the building. Hope you're well, Kent. Uh, mix and match for me, Rob, Fab, Johnson, Mav, Oggy, Skulls, Big Tom, Cov, Fornals, Kudos, Mubama, Benny. That could be. That could be dead handy. I mean, if there's any anybody else that's watching this, Ben as well, please get, get stuck in with, with your thoughts on what you think that David Moyes will put out, or more pertinently, what you'd like to see. Because as, as I say, I think this one's going to be really, really difficult to predict. Walshy comes in, says it should be a win, but who knows what Moyes is going to do. Um, Annie Dings up top. Annie Dings. Oh, OK. Nice, nice little nickname. Um, again. Now, this Kent's in the in the chat, and I did ask him for permission a little bit earlier. He put a little piece out on his Facebook page. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, Kent's got a Facebook page. If you just put in Kent Irons, you can send him a friend request. Nick neither accept it or decline it. It's entirely up to him. Um, he did a little Lincoln City opposition watch. Now, there were three players that he listed. Um, I've done a little bit of digging. One of the players uh, is actually got a bit of an injury. He's, it actually looks like it could be quite a long-term one. Now, his name is Tyler Walker. Now, Tyler Walker is actually the son for people who are of a certain age. Remember Des Walker? You, you know, in the 1990 World Cup, played in against West Germany in the semi-final. Uh, it's his son. Um, striker for Lincoln City. Um, he's a very pacey, quick, strong, direct type of striker, but he's not going to be involved. Now, there's another player that's come in, and, and Kent mentioned him on his little piece that he's got on his Facebook page. A gentleman by the name of Hakib Adelaken. Now, he has a little bit of a connection to West Ham. He's actually from Hackney. He's 27 years of age, six foot three inch winger come striker. He's playing as a striker at the minute, but he's nominally he's a winger by trade. He actually played his youth football for Crystal Palace. And would you believe it? He played for West Ham United. Yeah. So could be someone that could possibly come back to bite us on the arse. Um, in Kent's last little um, his last little player, he goes into a little um, analysis of is a gentleman by the name of Teddy Bishop. Now, he's a midfielder, likes a, part, likes a dig at goal, good passer. He's played at high at a higher level than where he is at the moment, and Kent believes he could do that again. Um, Kent, um, Lincoln City are a team that are principally a counter-attacking team. They, they're nominally listed that they normally like to play a 3-4-3 three, three formation. And... They're, like I say, they're very stylistically similar to us in the sense that they're quite happy in letting the opposition have the lion's share of possession and they'll play on the counter-attack. Now, how does that then stylistically me me mesh up with us? Because obviously that's pretty much how we play. Personally, I think that when we come against teams that are playing in a similar vein to us, playing as a counter-attacking mode, then I think that's when possibly we look a little bit suspect so be interesting to see how we sort of go for this but um just having a little look here um anybody else going in we've got ben's come in he said he'd sit up with a three five two oh he's gone fab mav og cress well can't have cress because he's injured but um ben johnson Kara, kelly four nows skulls mubama and Ings, a couple of names there that some people might not be familiar with. Patrick Kelly, uh, Oliver Skulls, obviously, from the youth teams, the uh, the development squads. Um, might, might You never know, might see them, maybe from the bench, maybe starting. Who knows? Larry's here from Lexington, Kentucky. Hope you are well. Game time for Orford and Marshall as well, says Ben. Well, I don't know. Have you been looking at my, my lineup? It's entirely possible. Um, yeah, Lawrence is just saying there, yeah, uh, Cresswell healthy. No, he's uh, he's he's out with a with a hamstring injury. So yeah, that's that dealt with. Um, well, she says I think we should have quite a strong bench, or he thinks we will have quite a strong bench. Excuse me. Uh, and Larry goes on to say that he he likes skulls as, as I do. I got to say he's a very impressive young man. Um, just focusing back on some of the aspects as far as Lincoln City are concerned, they are currently managed by. Mark Kennedy. Now, Mark Kennedy, some of you people might remember, 
is a former Millwall player. He was a winger for the Republic of Ireland. He played for Millwall. He played for Liverpool later in his career. So obviously the fact that he has a little bit of a Millwall connection, I'm pretty sure he's going to be fired up for this one. I'm pretty sure that he's going to be really wanting to, to you know, stick one on the old enemy of, of his former club. Um, as far as Lincoln City's achievements are concerned in football, they have been champions of the third tier of English football three times in their history. They've been champions of the fourth tier twice. They've been champions of the fifth tier twice. Uh, they are also winners on one occasion of the Football League trophy, as well as being runners up on another occasion. Um, I mean, for me, we should be turning up and we should we should have the expectation of winning. For me, whatever team is a bit like the, the game against uh, Bacatapola. I think that whatever team we put out in whatever formation we put it out in, in my opinion, we should be looking to to, to blow them away. Um, Kent's just come in, said Callum Marshall's a shout. Northern Irish International could be a good gauge tomorrow. Absolutely could. It absolutely could. Um, and also goes on to mention Mark Kennedy got the winner for Millwall versus Arsenal in the Cup years ago, if my memory serves me right. He did. That was at Highbury, as I remember. I think I think it was a 2-0 win from memory. Um, I got a vague recollection of him slamming the ball past David Seaman, who was in goal that particular occasion. Right. OK, so let's get down to it. What's the team that I'm hoping to see. Uh, before I get into that, I probably also should show you this little slide here. This is the respective form of both the teams. Now, you'll notice there, there's significantly more green indicating wins on the right than there is on the left. So you would say that in in terms of the form, in terms of the quality, in terms of everything, really, it, again, there's there's a reasonable expectation, I would suggest, that we should be looking to come away getting into the next round of this particular competition. Um, Lawrence comes in, he says, keep our starters healthy and fresh. We need the three points on Saturday. Yes, massively. We've obviously had the two results back to back against Man City, followed by Liverpool, where we, we had four points at half time in both of those games and got nothing at the end of it. So Sheffield United becomes for me, a very important, more important fixture. And we'll talk about this again when we come to the preview, but it's, does an 8-0 defeat for Sheffield United, does that wound them and actually make them a slightly more dangerous animal? We're going to find out on Saturday. We'll discuss it more when we do the preview. Um, Rani Bubble, hope you are well. Honestly, I kind of don't care what 11 we put out, but we better get it done in 90 minutes. Well, if we don't, as I said earlier, earlier Rani, we've got, there's no extra time. There's no VAR. If it goes to 90 minutes and we're all level like we did against Blackburn last season, we all know what happened there. It went to a penalty shootout and that was us out of the competition. Hope you are well, disabled team, and thanks for joining us. Um, and Lawrence is just saying hello also. Right. OK, so let's get down to it. Here it is. This is my lineup. Let me just turn that banner off. Yes, I am advocating a change in shape. Why not? Why not? They're a 3-4-3 nominal team. So I've kind of sort of met fire with fire. I've gone with a back three. So in goal, I'm advocating Lucas Fabianski going in. And I've gone for a back three of Angelo Ogbonna on the left, wearing the captain's armband. Naya for Gerd will play in my 11. He will play in the centre. And that will probably give you a little bit of a clue as to who I'm playing in defence against Sheffield United, but you'll have to tune in for the match preview of that one to find out whether I am uh, maybe you leaving you down the garden path or not, but you probably can work the rest out. Uh, I've also got Ben Johnson. Yes, I've brought him in. I, I would like to give him a little bit of a run out. I'm playing him as a right centre back. I'm then going with a midfield five. Yes. Now, I've got Thomas Socek playing at the base of this. I don't think we need two defensive midfielders. With all due respect to Lincoln, I've just gone with the one. So Thomas Socek comes in as the anchor man in midfield. I've gone with wing backs, and the wing backs are on the right, Tilo Kehrer, German international. As far as I'm concerned, you know, we haven't really seen that much of him at right wing back. 
let's have a look at him there. You never know. It, 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 it could be that we stumble onto something where we think, oh, hello, actually, maybe this is going to work going forwards. On the left, yes, I've brought in Ollie Skiles. Why not? Central midfield, another youth prospect I've brought in. Again, this is someone that some of you may know, some of you may not. Um, but alongside Pablo Fornells in central midfield, I have brought in George Earthy. Very impressive young man, playmaker. He signed a three-year contract only, I think it was three days ago. So he's going to be on absolutely cloud nine. I think he will be really a good choice to put in central midfield because he's really going to be so excited and exuberant. And I think we'd, it'd be quite a good thing to try and tap into that personally. That's just me if I was picking the 11. So I'd put him in alongside Pablo Fornells in central mid. And I've gone two strikers up top, two proper strikers. I've gone for a hustling, bustling, young, promising striker in Divine Mubama alongside the more wily fox in the box more experienced campaigner alongside him, Danny Ings. I mean, that for me is a team that, that should be able to get the job done, hopefully well within the 90 minutes. If we could get that tie sewn up after about 60, 70 minutes, then possibly we could start to look to the bench and hopefully maybe we could sprinkle a couple of youth players on the bench, maybe the likes of Lewis Orford, maybe the likes of Gideon Kodua, maybe the likes of... Um, Patrick Marshall, people like that. I'd like to see getting a little bit of an opportunity from the bench and, and seeing what they can do and, and making a, a sort of staking a claim for a first team berth in the not too distant future. I mean, this is what the tradition of West Ham has always been. You know, as I've said many, many times on previous streams on this channel and others where I've said that we've got that carpet that proclaims the Academy of Football. There it is. Let's try and live up to that. Let's try and bring a little bit. And you know something? I'll just sort of touch on this. There was an article I saw yesterday, day before, and it was about, um, again, forgive me, but this is this is Neil Harris, who is obviously a former Millwall legend. What can you do? But he's now the manager at Gillingham. And they've got a little thing where, and I think the figure was they're, they're going to look to get about 25% of the match day squad from the youth. Now, I would love that to be the case you know, mandatory across all of football. Not going to happen because it's all about the money, isn't it? Let's be honest. But just that would be such a such a good thing for sort of like the young developing talent to have that pathway that into the first team. Now, obviously, once they're in the first team squad, it's then incumbent that they grab the opportunity by the scruff of the neck and shake it for all it's worth. Obviously, we've got people like, as I say, Ben Johnson, regrettably, Connor Coventry, who both of whom look like they're going to be moving on to pastures new at the end of the season, if not before. So for me, I think it would be a, a nice thing to, to have in football. But as I say, it's not going to happen, but there you go. Let's get into the into the comments. Uh, we got um, Lawrence Dino, baby. Um, Dan Chesters is another one, another person that, that I, I think has potential. Um, if, if he wasn't out on loan, I'd have been a massive advocate of bringing Freddie Potts into the mix stylistically. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, very, very reminiscent of Declan Rice. I'm not saying he's on that level. I'm not saying he ever will. Who knows? Maybe he will be. Maybe he'll be even better. Who knows? But stylistically, I think a lot of people look at the way that Freddie Potts moves around the pitch. And even in the limited time that he he's, he's sort of been in the first team on the pitch, a lot of people have made that particular comparison. Um, Dan Chester's, yeah, excellent young, young player, potential there. there. There's so many, there's so many players that we've got in the under 21s, the under 18s that I think you could look at and, and go, maybe they've got a chance. Um, Kent comes in, youth cup, youth cup winners, earthy technical player, door opener, progressive, eye for a pass, scores goals. Yeah, mate, I, like I say, that's why I put him in my team. I'd, I'd have him in there. Like I say, he signed an, a three-year deal the other day. He's going to be absolutely on cloud nine. Let's let's try and really tap into that that good vibe that he's going to be bringing and and get him out there and, and see what he can do. I mean, you know, let's let's be honest. It's a league cup game. 
there'll be there'll be the cameras there. People will be watching. People will expect an upset because it's West Ham. That's normally what happens. It happened last season against Blackburn Rovers. Let's be honest. It's happened many times in the years where we've gone away to a team that really we should beat because they're a league or two or three below us in the, in the pecking order. And even if they don't beat us, let's look at the Kidderminster example. What was there? Five, six divisions between us. And it took all that to try and sort of get past them. So, yeah. Anyway, um, Lawrence, I could handle that lineup. Question, will Moyes play that many youth players? Probably not, mate. As I say, that was my 11. That's not what I'm saying that David Moyes will play. But if I was picking it, that's what I'd go. Um, Gatesy, I agree to sit Dino um, so he can play him on Saturday. Yeah, as I say, you might have, you might have sort of uh, read my hand, if you will. You, you might know where I'm going with my lineup on Saturday. Um, I I think that Aguirre, as we've discussed, has probably made a couple of mistakes in recent times. And I think sometimes you need to take a player out of the firing line just so they they can recalibrate, reassess uh, and go and come back stronger. I'm not saying he's a crap player. I think he's a he's a very good player, but he's just not having a good time of it at the minute. He's making some key mistakes which are leading to goals which it, it, you know, for a defender is something you can't carry on. Um, Coventry and Johnson got to go. They ain't going to make it at West Ham. Do you know what? Regrettably, I'd like to be able to put a case for the for the defence, but um, Coventry probably should have gone about a year, 18 months ago, if we're being completely honest. Ben Johnson, uh, really sort of, it really is a shame, but I think, yeah, as far as he's concerned, that ship has set sail. And yes, he did. He scored a cracking goal. It was away at Charlton. The ball came in from a corner, if I remember correctly, and he connects on the volley, flies past the goalkeeper. Brilliant execution, fantastic technique. And as I say, hopefully he is one for the future. Guys, give us your score predictions. There's nine of you that are watching this live. And I'll tell you what, if there's any of you guys that are watching this on Facebook or YouTube, uh, do us a favor, hop yourself over to the to the YouTube channel. And whilst you're there, just put a like on the stream. It's these things that just get the algorithms going and get us going out to a, a more wider audience. And whilst you're there, another thing you could do to help the channel along in its very early days and with our meager population would be to take the link from YouTube and just put it on your social media platform. Just share it onto your Facebook, share it onto your Twitter or X as it's now called X. Um, whatever. It, it all helps. Let's have a look at some of your score predictions. The disabled team has gone straight in 4-1 to West Ham. I like that very much. Um, Walshie has gone 4-0 to West Ham. We're actually keeping a clean sheet. Well, will wonders never cease. Lawrence has gone in with a 3-1 West Ham win. Uh, Rani Bubble, maybe a 3-0 win. Maybe a 3-1. Listen, for me, I, I like I say, the team that I've put out, do I suspect that that will be the team that David Moyes puts out? Probably not. It would be nice, but I, I'm not entirely sure. What I'd like to see, though, I would like to, to see us progress, obviously. I'd like to see us really take the game by the scrub of the neck, not sort of pussyfoot around and, and take this team lightly. I want to see us going out there, taking them on from the first whistle, asserting our dominance in terms of our quality. You know, we're several leagues above them, so we're clearly the better team on paper. But you never know, sort of tight ground, 10,000 or so capacity. I'm sure their fans will be up for it. You know, this... this uh, this this fixture against a Premier League team, it's an opportunity for them to to really show what teams at that league that division are capable of doing. So they'll want to stick one on us, and we need to make sure that we stand up to that challenge and we we blow them away. Get that game won within the first 50, 60 minutes. We can then look to maybe introduce a couple more substitutions to get some minutes under the belt of some players who maybe need it. Like I say, if we, if we could get some some minutes, even sort of like some players that maybe a lot of people have even forgotten about, like Maxwell Cornet. Maxwell Cornet, you know, he needs some minutes. He's a player that's earning an awful lot of money. Maybe possibly this is a way for him. I mean, personally, I think that 
think probably his race is run, if I'm being completely honest. But, you know, it, it's it's one way of getting him back in the shop window if we maybe want to sort of try and move him on or something like that. But anyway, let's have a look. A couple more score predictions we've got here. Kent's going 2-1 to West Ham. He says it's going to be a tough game. Dave says it's going to be a 1-0 win. Um, and uh, Ben comes in, he says 3-0 to the Mighty Irons. Um, Rani comes in, says an early goal would do us wonders. The longer it goes, the harder it gets. Yes, absolutely. Because obviously, as the minutes tick on, their confidence is going to grow and grow and grow. Our confidence is going to start to to sort of go a little bit in the opposite direction. Um, as far as the 3-0 to the West Ham is concerned, Ben's gone with a Mubama hat trick. Well, I... I'm going to go, I, I think we're going to concede a goal because I just think that our defence lacks a little bit of composure at, at key moments. I think that there's going to be times when we're going to be tested and I think there's possibly going to be an occasion when we maybe make a little bit of a, uh, a, a lapse in concentration. Not a bad, bad error like we've made in the last couple of games, but I think there will probably be a little bit of a lapse in concentration, which will open the door and allow one of their players to maybe stick the ball past whoever is in the West Ham goal, be it Ariola, be it Fabianski, be it Anang or an other. Um, but I think that we will just have too much for them. I think that over over the 90 minutes, I think that we're going to go out there, providing David Moyes puts, them, puts the players onto the pitch with the right sort of enthusiasm, with the right sort of tactical setup and and get out there. I think that we're going to win that 3-1 and find ourselves in the fourth round of the League Cup. I hope these words don't come back to bite me on the ass, but we'll wait and see. Um, ben comes in, says, uh, yes, Andy Potts, buddy. Holly was absolutely class and says a shame for Cornet, but he hasn't delivered when given the opportunity. Exactly. I mean, you know, all right, he he's he got an injury last season, uh, but he came back and he just shouldn't stay on side. It's as simple as that. Um, Kent comes in, Mubama to leave West Ham at the end of the season. My gut feeling, I hope you are wrong. However, I'm guessing you're probably basing that on the fact that Mubama could have come on against uh, Baka Tapola. And didn't David Moyes had one more substitution to make? Very, very strange one. And I, I hope, I hope that you are wrong. Um, could I see it happening? It's a vague possibility. Um, going to watch a game or two at Wickham, Ben, as he, he lives in Wickham. There you go. He does indeed. Right, guys, that is where I am going to leave it. As I say, thank you very much for joining us. As I say, if you could, before you all leave, pop over if you're not watching this on YouTube, please pop over to the YouTube channel. Um, drop a like on the stream. Um, don't forget, whilst you're over there, to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon, and then you'll be notified of any new content as and when it's uploaded to the channel. Um, and do us a favour, share, like I say, share us onto your your social media platforms to get the uh, the message out there that we're here, and uh, we 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 thank you very much indeed for your support in this particular endeavour, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, stay safe. Come on, you Irons, and we'll see you again the next time. Take care. The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Irons supporting food banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham and Essex communities. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, Barking and Dagenham Council, the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital, and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of the video details of this stream on YouTube. Thank you for your support. Come on, you irons.